Okay, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a great honor to be here to present our work. Um, I use a uh, statement done 20 years ago by Winfried Denk and Carl Savota, and that's actually also exactly the date I joined Bell Labs, joined Winfried Denk as a postdoc. It says photon unmanship is not really a gimmick. So today I'll show you some three photon imaging, so to show go from two to three, there's actually real advantages. So first, uh, the work is done by two of my graduate students and two of my postdocs. And uh, certainly we cannot do things with our money, so these are the grants we have, very quickly. So the idea to go deep is really simple. First, we choose long wavelengths, as long as possible without heating up the sample too much. If you compromise between brain absorption and brain scattering, you will find the window for imaging is very clear is roughly at 1,300 nanometer or 1,700 nanometer. So this is the solid curves are the calculation, and the stars are the experimental measurement. As you can see, this first order model works really quite well for in vivo imaging. Now, just going to long wavelength is not really quite enough. You actually have to go to high order nonlinear excitation, the photon upmanship, to really increase your excitation confinement. If you look at this, two photon excitation in the blue, and three photon excitation in the red. You can see that the 3D confinement, basically how sharp this peak is, is much better in three photon excitation. Now without tissue scattering, this point is not very important, because over here you have about 10 to the minus six, this is 10 to the minus 10. In all practical concern, you're comparing zero to zeros. But if you put scattering brain tissue into the equation, the situation changes dramatically because in addition to geometric focus, you also have this very bad exponential decay of your signal as a function of imaging depth. Now you see that as you go deep into the tissue, this is your focal plane. Away from the focus for two photon imaging showing up in the blue, the out of focus background once again becomes very, very significant. And that's exactly the reason why one photon doesn't work. That means in two photons, if we go deep enough in a, in a densely stained sample, it should also not work. It turns out in this case, the two ideas, longer wavelength and three photon excitation, really goes hand in hand. The reason is you have to go, practically speaking, you have to use fluorophores. And the long wavelength window for fluorophores for two photon excitation just does not match very well, okay? And if you go to three photon excitation, you can see that if you go to 1300 nanometer, all the green blue dyes works quite well for this window. And if you go to 1700 nanometer, you can see all the orange and red fluorophores works really well. So in this case, it's very lucky that these two ideas essentially is one. You want to use long wavelength, you want to use three photon. In fact, you cannot go only with one because the other also makes it practically useful. And it's not just a uh, theoretical analysis. You can see the contrast is really striking. In this case, I'm imaging the same mouse, brain vasculature. So the blood vessels are stained, in this case, with fluorescein dextrin. You can see that at about 800 microns in for two photon excitation at 920 nanometer, you can see the blood vessel is bright, but outside the blood vessel is also quite bright. Now, outside the blood vessel, this signal is not really because of dye leakage. You can do the same mouse, same place, same time. You can see that for three photon excitation, the blood vessel is very bright, but outside, there's nothing to see. This just shows you that if you go deep enough in a uniformly stained sample like blood vessel, in this case, out of focus background eventually becomes very significant. Now, this is for blood vessel. You can also see for uh, transgenic mouse with a G-CAMP label neurons. So in this case, you can see about 800 microns deep below the surface of the brain. You can see two photon imaging, again, 920 nanometer, the peak for G-CAMP excitation. This three photon excitation at 1300 nanometer. You can see the difference in contrast. In two photon, the bright neurons are still quite visible, but the dim neurons are no longer visible because the out of focus background really overwhelms the in focus signal. In three photon microscopy, as you can see, all the neurons are very visible. Now, the most striking place to look at is this dark thing. This is a blood vessel. In this transgenic mouse, the blood vessel is not labeled, so it should be completely dark. In three photon microscopy, you can see how black this is. In two photon, you can still see 
kind of blood vessel right here, but you can see even in the blood vessel it's supposed to be totally dark, if you go deep enough, you still have enough signal on top of that. So that just shows you the single background advantage by going to an extra photon, three photon microscopy. And you can quantify this by just drawing a line across the vessel, signal is inside, and the background is outside. You can do signal over background called SBR, signal to background ratio. For two photons, you can see as you go about 800 microns in, for both blood vessel imaging and neuron imaging, this ratio goes towards about one. That means you have equal amount of signal and background. For three photon microscopy, even for the deepest point we can show, you have signal to background ratio above 30. In practical purposes, that's infinite because you don't have any sort of a detriment with SBR this large. Now this might be surprising to you because three photon is a high order nonlinear excitation. It's kind of inefficient. We all know it's inefficient. But I'll show you next is that if you go deep enough, three photon excited signal at the long wavelength window can actually be stronger than two photon excited signal. So this is a simple logic is that at the surface, two photon is gonna be much brighter. But as you go deep into the tissue, the signal goes down exponentially. And how fast the signal goes down depends on the wavelength you're using. If you go to longer wavelength for three photon, this decay length is much longer. That means even at the surface, two photon is brighter. If you go deep enough, eventually the three photon signal will catch up. So that's the simple theory. And this is experiment, again, same mouse, same time, with fluorescein stain showing you the amount of pulse energy required to get the same amount of fluorescence for two photon signal and three photon signal. You can see that at the surface, you need a lot more pulse energy to get the same amount of signal for three photon excitation. If you go deep enough, about right here, 850 microns or so, the pulse energy needed to get the same signal for two and three photon are exactly the same. You can go look at the neurons, again, same mouse, same brain, same time, you can see the projected crossover point is about seven to 800 microns in. So this really tells you that even if you have a single neuron stain in your brain, if you go deep enough in the mouse neocortex at about 800 microns, the long wavelength three photon signal actually will be stronger than two photon signal. So there's nothing to lose by doing three photon in this case. So we start our journey by doing structural imaging. You can see 3D reconstruction of neurons, all the way to the hippocampus. If there are recent results, we can image cerebellum all the way to 1.25 millimeter deep. Cerebellum is a very scattering piece of brain. It's very hard to image. So you can see we can go quite deep in cerebellum. And we can also image it through the intact mouse skull. In this case, the skin is peeled back, but the bone is intact. We can see red fluorescent protein label neurons and all the third harmonic generations, quite a few hundred microns into the brain with the bone intact. And of course, you want to look for activity. In this case, showing you a movie of entire, sub, uh, entire uh, mouse cortical column imaging with 18 sections, a densely labeled neurons. You can see all the neurons are labeled, 18 sections, about 50, nano, 50 microns uh, depth gap. And we can record a movie for every one of those. And these are the power we use. It turns out, if you sum up all those powers, you can see we can easily do this simultaneously. If we can do the engineering, to create those 18 sections simultaneously. So it's possible in principle in terms of photon budget to image the entire cortical column in situations like this. You can see this is the deepest layer six neuron because the purple shows you the white matter. So that's right above the white matter. And if we image the hippocampus, as we know it's much harder to do because the white matter in between is much harder to get through. Quantitatively, the white matter is about 2.5 times more scattering than the gray matter. And we can image the hippocampus, structural imaging, Y matter over here, neurons, SP layer of neurons over here. You can see about the Y matter coming right here. The neurons will pop out. That's the SP layer for the neuron. And of course, we want to look for activity at this depth. So that's the next slide. You can see the movie, a 50 minute recording. This is 15 minutes a section of that speed up by a factor of 60. So we can look at mouse brain thinking quantitatively and very deeply. And we can image the mouse several times over multiple weeks. And I could quantify this to know how many photons we get per neuron 
by doing this, then we know how much is noise and how much is signal. We can do delta F over F slides. Everybody shows that. I just skipped that. OK, I think David is getting anxious. <laughs> Let me just uh, skip to the last slide just to show, should we abandon two photons? That's not the case because two photons never replace the one photon. Three photons would never replace two photons either. They each have their pros and cons. But I see three photons has opportunities at those long wavelength windows. One is imaging very deep. I showed you some results of hipp hippocampus imaging. One is imaging very densely labeled brains. In this case, even a little bit shallower region could be very useful to go to three photon. And lastly, imaging through skulls and spinal cord and monkey dura. Thank you very much. <laughs>